get ready with me and we're going to talk about three ways that you might accidentally be disrespecting your husband, partner, boyfriend, man that you're dating, woman that you're dating, non-binary person that you're dating, anybody who values respect. I am two years into my current relationship. I have had many expectations of him making adjustments to make me happy. The thing that I didn't realize because he didn't know how to communicate it to me was that I may not be making him feel respected all of the time. My eyebrows look really funny with nothing else done. I've been doing a lot of rating. I've been wanting to improve our relationship. I've been wanting to improve me as a housewife. And I read two books that had kind of the same point to make at the same time. I was reading them simultaneously. They had different approaches. They were kind of about different things. One was more of an autobiography and one was more of a, here's your relationship and here's the things that you might be doing wrong in it. They both started talking about respect. In the autobiography, there was a line and I'm not going to do names of books right now because I'm going to do a full review later. But there was a line in the book that said men crave respect and receive respect in the same way that women crave and view love. I am a love monster. I love love. I love seeing other people in love. I love watching movies about love. I am constantly seeking out more love from my partner. I just kind of assumed men were the same. And this may not apply to all men. This is definitely a generalization. And like I said, there might be women that value or crave or need respect more than they need physical love and, and like a, a love in your face love. Thinking about it, maybe my partner isn't feeling respected. The book then goes on to talk about the ways that you might not be respecting your partner. First way that you might be accidentally disrespecting your partner, being helpful. As a woman who is a people pleaser, I am always seeking to be helpful. I am a helpful person in my mind. But the way that they portrayed it was that maybe my partner isn't receiving that help as help. Maybe he's receiving it as me not respecting that he knows what he's doing. Me discrediting his choices and the decisions that he's made. And this can be as simple as your partner's doing something and you say, are you missing this? Did you think about this? <sighs> Swallow my pride on this one and try to help less. <laughs> Step number two, controlling the environment. As housewives, we do have a way that we do things. We like it done a particular way. We stick to a routine for the most part because it makes our lives easier. But if we ask our partner to do something for us or if they're helping with something, it doesn't have to be our way. I know I am a control freak and that is super stressful for me too because I would much rather things be done my way. When you do that, you stifle your partner. They have their own way of thinking. They are a counterpart. We don't want to date ourselves. We don't want somebody to do things exactly the same way that we do. We do value that difference that when we tell them or ask them to do it our way, we're not really acknowledging and respecting their differences or their thoughts or opinions or methods. Men approach things way differently than women do or two people in a relationship, regardless of gender approach things, way differently than the other person does. That doesn't make one way right or one way wrong. So try to start thinking about situations when you might be doing that and just hold your tongue because you might be making your partner feel disrespected. The third way you might accidentally be disrespecting your partner, setting too many expectations. It's important to communicate your needs. It's important to feel like your partner values your needs. What's not important is to nag about those needs or continue to push on them. I am 5,000% guilty of this. I have borderline personality disorder and this makes my life super difficult. I start getting very panicky if my needs aren't getting met. Very, very panicky. Scared that the world is ending. I mean, it's, it's dramatic, but it's how it feels. When my needs aren't getting met, what I used to do and what I've done for the last two years is continuously remind my partner of what my needs are. He knows. He could probably write a whole book on what my needs are at this point. He is very aware of when he's meeting my needs and when he's not and very aware of what those needs are and what they entail. He doesn't need me to remind him. And the more I remind him and the more I nag him, the more stressed out he gets, the less respected he feels, the more pressured he feels, the more he feels like he's not in control of making these decisions himself. My partner definitely values control of himself. I can't be the center of attention and focus for everything, even though I really want to be. He's not going to be able to meet my needs any better with me disrespecting him by nagging him with them. So since I've stopped being as pushy with my needs, my needs are getting met now. I'm getting more communication. I'm getting more thoughtful in this. I'm seeing all of these beautiful attributes that I know that he possesses that are one of the reasons that I'm in love with him. 
And it's because he feels respected and he feels a little bit more, I mean, I don't want to speak for him because I haven't had this conversation with him, but I'm assuming he feels more respected and more in control of the situation and more capable and more room to breathe in order to do those things. So think about those three things that you might be doing to accidentally disrespect your partner. Think about if they apply to you. Think about other things that you might be doing. I'm still learning too. So if there's something that you're doing, I might be doing it too. So definitely share in the comments below if you have another tip of something I might be doing that's disrespectful too.